Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bikes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and this is part two of the APM 2.0 playlist. And I am going to use APM Java Client 8.x version. So there have been a lot of changes happened in APM 2.0 and the and the APM Java Client 8.x. So this particular series is going to cover all of them in detail, right? Um, and and if you haven't watched the installation part, that is very very important. So please do watch the part one before watching this, right? Um, so yeah, in this video, we're going to see how we can launch the apps using decide capabilities. Ah, so there is a latest change that the decide capabilities is now deprecated. So you cannot use that anymore. So, so we'll see how we can use, uh, UA automator two option and XC UA test options to basically launch the app, right? So without wasting a lot of time. So let me get into the IntelliJ, right? Let me first create a new project. So, uh, so I want to create a new project, uh, a Maven project here, uh, uh, and then, so I want to choose a Maven project and let's call it as APM uh, 2.0. I do not know whether it allows this name, but let's try it out. And I want to use JDK 11. Uh, please don't use JDK 17 or 19 because I'm not sure, um, you know, the APM can handle it. So a uh, recommended version is 11 or 14. Uh, so I have personally worked with 11 and there are no issues. So highly recommend you to use 11. So yeah, I want to create a new window. Good. So so basically, uh, it created a dip, uh, simple project for me. And uh, let me go to the bomb.xml. So in the last video, uh, in the last video, what we've done. Uh, so in the last video, we have uh, installed the APM CLIs, uh, the APM server via APM CLI. And then we also installed the drivers in the uh, APM server. We then installed, uh, you know, APM inspector, but there is something that was pending. This is called as APM client. So we need to basically write some piece of code uh, to basically tell the APM server uh, what the devices need to do. So in order to do that, you can even use curl commands, but it's pretty complex. That's why APM guys have developed clients, client versions in different languages, different programming languages. In our case, we are going to use Java. So, so basically we are going to install that. So what you can do is simply you can type APM Java client uh, Maven dependency, right? So, or uh, if you are using IntelliJ, it's, it's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is dependencies, dependency, and then I want to tell APM uh, Java client or something. So let me search for it. APM. Okay, but it's not coming. So let's say APM Java client may have a different C. And then also it's called as Java client. So so I can just type Java hyphen client. I don't know. It should fetch it, but uh, let's go here. Let's copy this and then let's put it here. Okay, maybe uh, I do a Maven input and then it should download all the dependencies for me. So once this is done, you have everything ready. Uh, so you have your your server ready. You have your devices ready. For example, I have launched the Android here. Uh, for example, the Android emulator. Um, if you do not know, uh, once you download the Android Studio, all you have to do is basically go here. Uh, first, install the SDKs for you, uh, whichever you need. Um, so here in my case, I have installed this particular version. Um, but again, if you are if you want to directly install it, go to the AVD manager, click on create new AVD device, and then choose a device. Okay, next, once you choose next, it asks you to, you know, download an SDK. So uh, choose an SDK. In your case, in my case, it's already downloaded. So it's got, giving this. In your case, you can just download it from here. Click on finish, finish, finish. You will have your SDKs download, which is your software development kit for Android. Um, and then uh, you can also create an emulator out of it. So, so that's the whole thing, right? Let's let's close all this stuff. So I have all these things ready, and I also have simulator ready. That which means I have my Xcode installed. I can also open the simulator like this. But again, you can also open when you uh, when you basically launch your APM test. So it, it it has the capability to launch it automatically. So we don't have to worry about it. Uh, um, so I want to install, it's asking me to do something. So yeah. So first let's go here. Um, 
since the Java client is ready, let me start the APM server. So that's very, very important, right? So, so it's pretty easy, APM. And if you don't need any plugins, then you don't have to do anything. But if you need any plugins, you have to use hyphen hyphen plugins. In my case, I don't need anything. I just start APM. That's it. Now, uh, now the APM server is ready. Uh, client is ready. We can start sending commands. But one important thing is, if there are multiple devices connected uh, to the device, then the APM server needs to know in which particular device it wants to launch it. So for that, previously we are using decide capabilities. Um, but hereafter, we are going to use something called as options. Um, so yeah, that's what we want to see. So, uh, you know, maybe I don't need these things anymore. Uh, so let me delete it, whatever that comes from there. Um, I will basically create a new uh, class, uh, basically with com.test dot maybe launch or just Android test, right? Good. So once this is done, I also think I need a unit testing library. So I can also create, uh, you know, something like JUnit5, uh, which can basically, what happened to this uh, JUnit? Or I do not know, uh, you should automatically fetch all these things. So I have added the uh, JUnit uh, here. So I am using 5.x version. You can also use test engine, it's up, up to you. Um, and then I basically I wanted to create a test annotation here. Um, and then let's say public void uh, Android launch test, whatever, right? And uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, there is something called as UI automated two options. Guys, there is no decide capabilities. Please don't use that. It's, it's a lot of work. So, so you two automated two options and then here I can say options equal to new UI automated two options, right? And uh, whatever you want to set, you can set here. So there are uh, important things that you want to set. First, you want to tell what kind of platform that you are trying to automate, right? Since this is already Android two automated options, you it, it will automatically assume uh, if you don't set anything, it will automatically assume these two things. So you don't have to really mention it. But again, some people still mention it uh, for code reader But I mean, it's up to you, but I'm not going to mention it. Okay, maybe I'll mention it. I'll just copy this two stuff and bring it here and then put it, okay? And instead of that, I'll just say this, say this, that's it, right? Or instead of you passing this as a string, there is an uh, automation name or something. Uh, basically that's an interface and you have all these options there. You can choose the, like this which basically has the same thing, right? So, so you don't have, you don't make a spelling mistake or something like that. Uh, but I think the platform name should be still Android. And this one can be automation, automation name dot uh, Android you are to, right? These two things are again optional. Even if you don't mention it, it will take it by default if you extend this, okay? Uh, this is also optional. But you need to tell um, if there are multiple devices, uh, you can sell, tell which device you want to launch it, right? So set uh, device name. So you can say the device name. In my case, there is only one device, so I can give some uh, random names like this. And, uh, and then after that, options dot, the important thing is what app you want to work with, right? In, in this particular tutorial, I'm going to use an app from Sauce Labs. So if you, I will leave this link in the description so you don't have to worry about it. So this is Sauce Labs, my demo app warrant. So they have this releases page where you can find this APK and the zip file. And if you are testing with iOS reveal device, you can use the IPA file. But in my case, it's app, APK file and zip file. Let me have a small sip of my coffee. So yeah, so once this is done, um, Again, in J unit, you don't have to even mention this. Set app, right? So I'm going to, I already have these apps with me. So uh, I think I will just basically copy them from another project. And then, you know, maybe I'll create a new directory called as apps. And then I just put them there. Right. So I have both the apps now. So now you need to get the path, right? So I'll just open this in Finder. Or you can simply say uh, set app 
um, current working directory. Uh, so you need to just mention the path where it is. So, so you can give the you know uh, absolute path, but in my case, I'm doing the relative path from the project directory apps, and then this name is pretty hard. So what I can do is refactor, rename, copy all the name, um, and then. I just put it here, right? Once this is all done, um, what we have to do is we have to launch that, app, right? So new Android drive, right? And then it, it basically asks for the APM server uh, that it has to refer to. So you can say new URL, and then the URL is HTTP uh, localhost, or you can just say one two seven point zero point zero point one colon four seven two three right and and from APM two point zero you don't have to mention WD slash hub it's not needed uh, by default it will take this right and then let me um, add method signature here and then here I can pass the options okay so that that's all uh, so now we should have launched the app. So you can name it as driver just for readability. And then you can say driver dot. For now, I don't want to do anything. Like let's see whether it just launches the app. So maybe I'll put a thread dot sleeve for 10 seconds, but something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's too much. Let me put four. And then good, all good. So let's try to launch the app now. So make sure that your APM server is running. Your Android device, Android emulator is running, and then now try to launch the test. So if you notice here, the terminal should receive the request. So the client is sending uh, commands to the server, and the server will respond to the, you know, it will cascade the commands to the emulator. So now the app getting launched, everything is good, right? Similarly, uh, if you want to launch an iOS test, right? So you'll copy the same stuff. I don't want to type everything all again. Uh, use the iOS and here a XC UI test options and then new XC UI test options, right? Again, you don't have to mention these two stuff. Okay. By default, the XC UI test will set the name as iOS and XC UI test. So you don't have to really mention this. Uh, let's try without mentioning them, right? So uh, all good. So the device, so you can mention uh, a simulator, uh, iPhone 12, right? And uh, it should launch simulator uh, automatically. I see, I didn't have a simulator open here, but it should launch it. So iOS driver, and this should be iOS driver. Right. Okay, so the path is not this. I need to give the zip path, right? So open in, uh, so just need to refactor, rename, copy this whole stuff. Right, so now let's try to run it. So basically it should launch the simulator by itself. If you have your Xcode install and stuff like that. Let's see the comment. So all these things are going there. Again, guys, um, if you are using the latest APM client, this will be appended automatically, the APM. Okay. Uh, because this is the WC3 capabilities. If you, if you are using the older version of APM client, uh, you have to mention something like, uh, APM colon and everything. So it says could not start a, uh, creating simulator is having a problem. Uh, okay, so let's open the simulator now. Basically, it should open it. Uh, maybe I have given some incorrect name or something. Or my Xcode, I have just updated my Xcode and that seems to have some problem. And that's why it's not launching it. So let's say uh, open simulator and then it doesn't have the 12. Okay, so maybe I'll use a 14. Uh, this is iPhone 14, right? So iPhone 14, and yeah. Let's try to run it. 
otherwise we will just open it by ourselves right so let's hope it opens it yeah so this is opening it i do not know why the older versions are gone after i updated the xcode but i was using iphone 12 for a very long time so so maybe they have that updated something or i just need to create them i'm not sure there are only few devices coming here now that's okay so basically it's trying to launch the ios app first launching the ios simulator and then the app maybe for the first time it takes a little bit of extra time because it needs to open the ios simulator the best way is you open it yourself uh, but yeah it should be it should be done in a few minutes so it's trying to uh, install the app uh, that we gave in the uh, capabilities okay it's still not in there let's wait for even few more seconds so if you notice here the app is getting installed so it is there and now we should launch the app so don't worry about these logs. I think this is all the logs that the APM server interacts with the iOS simulator. So you don't have to really work, you know, worry about it unless you see an error lock here. It's all just debug logs. Okay. Guys, again, in, in the coming videos, I will be covering a lot of stuff related to APM 2.0 and the APM Java client 8.x. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. So if you notice, I have made a lot of videos, but uh, you know, sometimes I feel, uh, you know, there is not a lot of people who, who basically watches my videos and sometimes I lose my uh, interest and motivation. So, so yeah, share with people uh, and then like the channel if you, if you, you know, subscribe to the channel if you like it. Maybe it's taking like a little more extra time. Basically, I have re-triggered the test because I do not know what happened. It just got stuck. And then, so I just rerun the test. I didn't change anything. I just rerun. Let's see what happened. So it says it failed to create WDA session, uh, could not proxy to the remote server. Uh, and then it's okay. Let's see what happens, right? So even if it fails, it's we know what why it is failing. I think that I have recently updated my Xcode, and then that may cause be causing all these problems. But yeah, it's now trying to install the install the web driver agent. So yeah, so this is happening, but it's, it's taking a lot of time for the, you know, since this is the first time, so it's okay. So now the app is launched at last. So, so yeah, last time I didn't wait it for long. I was impatient, uh, but again, this time I was patient enough to wait for the web driver agent to get installed and then launch the app. So, so. This is how basically, uh, you know, uh, you can launch the Android and iOS apps. Uh, so let let the homepage comes. Yeah, the homepage is displayed. So this these are the two simple uh, code that you have to write to launch the apps. And we will cover more interesting stuff in the future videos. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.